Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.dev. In this video, what I want to do is show one review uh, React Router 6, but also talk about the React Router, like new data routers that were added in 6.4. So in summary, basically what happened is that the same people who make React Router, the same people who created the framework Remix.js. And in Remix.js, they introduced certain ideas like data loaders and actions, which are becoming embraced by many of the other uh, big uh, meta frameworks but those ideas uh, you can now use without necessarily having to, if you don't want to use remix and get all the other bells and whistles that remix has you just really want to have data loaders and actions which are pretty cool um, you could just do so using uh, react router that's now part of uh, the library so essentially what you would do is you still have the old router so basically first let me show you how react router 6 has worked up to this point or up till 6.4 which it's still you can still do this um, well, what would happen is that you would go to like your app.js, actually I'd go to my index.js and we would import browser router, which is like this, basically this provider component that provides all the routing data to all the child components. Okay. So, you know, I imported browser router, I rename it router and then, you know, I just wrap my app, my application with the router component and then I'd be able to use routes. So then in app.js, I'd be able to use these components, routes, route, and link. So I would use routes to designate where all my routes are going to render. So essentially these, what this basically is saying is that right here where this routes component is located, one of these routes will be rendered. And then it would match it based on the URL and so forth. Okay, so, and then you would use the links to link between them. So what we're going to do is we're going to port this over to use the new data API. So first we'll just show you how to switch it over, okay? So again, if you like this style, you can still use this. React Router 6, uh, even now like at 6.5, still has this particular type of style allowed in there. These are the old school routers. Now I'm going to show you how to use the new school routers, which is going to have a slightly different pattern. Um, so essentially the way I would do this is first thing we would want to do is we need to create the router. And instead of just like having the router as just a provider component, the first step is you would First, go to we'd, I'd, I'd create a separate file, so I'd call a file called a router.js. That's what I'm going to do. And what we're going to want to do is import from React Router. And again, if you're not familiar with this library, the library you're supposed to install to use React Router is React Router DOM. So you'd be doing like an npm install React Router DOM. But the first step in the new way of doing things is we create the router kind of as its own separate thing. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to import two functions. We're going to import um, create browser router, okay, and then create routes from elements is what it should be, okay. And so we're going to import those things. I'm just going to make sure that that's the right thing. Create, there we go, create routes from elements. There's also create routes from children. And in that case, what you do is you would actually define the routes via like a JavaScript object. Um, I like the from elements because it feels more like the way we used to use router. Um, so we're going to use that. And again, you can refer to the documentation just to show you like the difference uh, when you use create elements from children. Do, 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 do. Actually, let's go to here, this one. So this is how it would look like if you're creating uh, routes from elements. Create browser router. Okay. And that's going to be like automatic. Now, if I want to create routes from elements, see, it's going to end up looking like this. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. See, see it looks more like you're writing JSX, which I find more intuitive versus writing, you know, an array with a bunch of routes, which makes sense too. I just prefer, I prefer, personally prefer that way. Okay, and I'm glad they give you the option. Okay. So we're going to import that and essentially we're going to create a variable called router. That's our router. And it should be the equal the return value of create browser router. And then create browser router should equal, I mean, we should pass to it our routes, which are going to be create routes from elements. And then that is going to take an argument. And that argument is going to essentially be our routes. Okay, so that means we're going to want to import route from React Router DOM. Okay, and essentially the way you'll do this is you start off with just sort of like your main route. Because the idea is that generally you're going to have like 
a main look to the page, like a, probably like a uniform navigation that's constantly there and uh, a footer that's always kind of there on the page. So really the part that changes is the middle. So essentially your main route is going to represent sort of like that layout component. So in this case, we'll say like uh, route path equals slash. So this is our main page and element. Okay. We will for now just show um, H1. Hello world. Okay. Okay. There we go. So there's our router. Okay. And then we would export that router. So export default router. Okay. Now, if I want to use the router, again, we'd use index.js. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, the router show up separately. So that way you can see like both versions side by side. So what I am going to do is that also from router here, we're going, to, we're going to import router provider. So if you're using the new data API, then you want to use router provider, not browser router, the browser router component. That's if you want to use the old, the old style, which doesn't have loaders and actions. Okay, we'll eventually get to loaders and actions so you can see why you would want loaders and actions. Okay. And then essentially what you would do is you would just put in the router provider and you'd pass it the router as a prop. Okay, I just need to make sure I import the router. So let me import router. There we go. And let me just close this. And there we go. Okay, so let me just start this up. NPM start. So we can see. So technically now we're going to see both. We should see both things. And see, we see the hello world. So this is coming from the new router. This is coming from sort of the old school router. So this is the app component as it was it with the old router. And again, see the old router, we have the buttons with the links and, you know, it switches things up. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate that sort of same pattern here. Um, but let's first create a main component. So I'm going to go back, start creating some components. So new folder components, and we're going to create a um, home component, home.js. This represents just sort of like the main, the main layout. Okay. So function home, we don't even really need uh, props. You'll see here, like we generally get a lot of stuff either from like our loader or our, or from actions. There's a bunch of places we can get data other than just props now. Okay, so function, and then we're just gonna return a div, h1, we're gonna have like the header. So imagine imagine like you had a header component that's right there. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna use something called an outlet. The outlet component represents where child routes will show up. Okay, so if you ever use like slots with like web components or in view or in Svelte, or an Angular, I mean, React is really the only thing that doesn't have slots. Or props.children, you guys get to kind of understand the idea of how this works. Okay, and then we'll put an H1 that represents like a footer. Okay, so so theoretically, like this is the page. And basically, if there's a sub route that's being rendered, it's just going to show up here in the outlet. And then we'll just export this component, export default home. And now I can go back to my routes, back to my router. And let's import home. Okay. And then we're going to say, hey, whenever that main route renders, what it's going to render is the home component. Okay. And so now instead of it being self-closing, I'm going to have a closing route tag. And then now I can define child routes in here. Okay. So for example, we'll have the same as the other three. So we're going to have, well, we're also going to have route, uh, path equals other and element equals and when it's other we're going to use h1 other and i can think of one possible reason we might run into a little hiccup later but we'll, we'll see here because of the way the tree is set up, I'm not sure, like, since both providers are parallel to each other instead of, like, under each other, well, 
um, the link buttons communicate with the same, communicate the way I expected both of them. Okay, and then this will be another. So, so essentially this will be like slash another, slash other. Notice I'm not putting the slash in front of it because since it's a child route, it's assuming that it's starting from wherever this left off. Okay, so then this is another. Okay, now let's see how that works. Okay, so right now, let me go to home. And see, like that's changing there because that link, those links are in the same component tree. Um, why are all three showing up? Okay, let me go back to the main page. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Header and footer, header and footer is supposed to be there. It's what shows up in the middle that's different. So if I go to other, see right now, nothing. This is not changing, and the reason for that is just because of the way I have this written out. So if I go to index.js, see these are parallel to each other, and that link tag is not within the tree. This tree, so I can fix that pretty easily. I'll just do this. Although I don't know if this will create a new problem, but let's try it out. Okay, so if I wrap all that, so that way that link tag is technically descended from both providers. Let's see if that does the trick. Ah, but then one takes over the other. Okay. So, let's not do that. Okay, so you can use them in parallel, but you can't use them on top of each other. Let's see. Okay, so let me get rid of that. Put this here. So all that means is that I'm just going to have to go over to the home component and create some links over here. So for import link, and then I'll just kind of create the same three links over here. So I'll just head over to my app.js, copy these three links, because the links don't work any differently. Okay. And now if we go back over here, see they have their own links and they should work so I go to the other I go to another and see it's changing and you see like the header and the footer are the same because again that's the parent route that's like that home component and then see the other and the another is showing up where the outlet is so you get that nice sort of wrapper feel okay so you can kind of use it as like a layout and then you know again here that works for that component tree so that's essentially how you would switch so again basically now if I were to kind of just go full Full throttle what I really do is I can get rid of this now I can get rid of that because that's the old way of doing it and then this would become sort of my my new uh, starting place for my app so technically right now I'm not even using the app component I'm actually home becomes sort of my new home okay so now the thing is like as I mentioned, you get these new data APIs. So what is that all about? Where's the benefit of that? Okay, so for example, let's say um, I want to render like all, we'll make another route called Pokemon. Okay, so first up, we'll make the component. New file called Pokemon.js and it's just going to be function Pokemon Okay, and we're just going to return h1 Pokemon. Okay, and then let's just export that function, export default Pokemon. And now we can add it to our routes. So I'll add another route. Let me import Pokemon. And then basically this is going to render the Pokemon component. And this will be for slash Pokemon. Okay, and then let me go back to my home component to add a link for that. So I'll add a link for Pokemon. Okay, and that can, that should all be working. So now, see, I have Pokemon, and see when I click on Pokemon, that Pokemon component shows up now. That's all fine and good. But what I want to do is that Pokemon, I want to bring data from here. So I have the this list of Pokemon over here. So I want to bring in this data 
usually I'd have to like do like a, you know what happens when the component loads I'd have to like use a use effect and then the use effect would make the API call then update state and you'd have to kind of create like a fallback position so that way it doesn't try to render the Pokemon on that initial render of the component before the API call happens you get to this sort of really complex annoying pattern that if you've been doing react for a while you're probably familiar with and probably are not the biggest fan of okay but since we got react router we can make this a lot easier okay so now what we can do is what I'll do is I'll create a file called loaders loaders.js again do you have to break these up into different files no but again it just makes your files a little bit less cluttered okay so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export any loader function so these are just functions that should run before a particular route loads so the idea behind a loader is that hey this this route renders first run this function and then take the result of this data and send it over uh, for the use of that, any components that are currently being rendered so any component that's on the page well that route well that route is loaded um, can then make use of the loader data um, and this is like a good place to do asynchronous stuff because then you don't have to worry about you know that subsequent it'll render after the loader has finished running um, so in that case what would happen is I'll write a function called export const load Pokemon or we'll call it Pokemon loader and basically it's gonna be an async function because I want to do asynchronous stuff that's usually what you're using this for to send asynchronous data okay you could also just send any other data you would like but really this is really meant for like asynchronous data now the cool thing is that the loader receives like something so like if, if there was a param in the URL I could also just get like params and de deconstruct params out of that initial argument if I need to use a param like if I want to get like a particular Pokemon or something like that okay we'll do an example of that a little bit later on we'll do like a single Pokemon route okay but right now what I want to do is I want to um, get all the Pokemon so we're gonna sit there and say like return fetch then I'll pass in the URL so let me go get that URL and then say boop and what we can do is a okay fetch and then we're gonna dot JSON that and uh, yeah return that promise okay and then that that's done okay so I have this function it's been exported um, and it's just gonna return the result of the fetch okay so now that we got the loader function ready to go let's go attach it to our route so head over the router I would import the loader so import Pokemon loader and then what's gonna happen is you pass a loader prop to that route so loader equals and I pass it the function Pokemon loader so now what's gonna happen is that when this route loads up this function is gonna run and then that return value will then get uh, basically get evaluated by the route so basically what's gonna happen is that it's always asynchronous in a sense so essentially like it's always like a I think that loader gets called within an asynchronous context so the end result is a promise gets passed the promise resolves and then the component is going to render after the promise resolves so the idea is that essentially all the asynchronous stuff you have to do is done before the route even loads so then you don't have to worry about all the use effecty stuff that would normally have you'd have to be concerned with when rendering a component which is nice so so with that in place let's just actually see that it works let's go back to that Pokemon component now in order to use that data from the loader what you would do is you have to import a hook called use loader data okay and essentially what it should be returning me is the Pokemon so I would just say like I'll just call it Pokemon equals use loader data and again it's going to do based on the route it's going to say okay hey what's the data from the loader of the currently loaded route or routes and load those in okay um, cool and then uh, let's just console log it so we can see that it actually did the thing Pokemon okay so let's go back to the page 
and now let me bring up DevTools. Now take a look over here in the console. So I go to home, nothing, other, nothing. And like you're rendering a component, but watch what happens when I hit the Pokemon route. And see the Pokemon show up. So see, it made the API call, and that data got loaded. Okay, so now, see like this component looks a lot simpler. Like if you think about like having to do like a synchronous API calls in your React components in the past, if you're not using this, it can get a little bit funky, okay? And that's actually pretty simple, especially compared to like pretty much any other way you might have done it in the past. Okay, you just return the data. Okay, now then what happens? So now what I can do is I can go over here and say like div. Um, we're gonna say div, and we're gonna give us a class of Pokemon because I am gonna style this a little bit because if not, it's going to look ugly. And then in each of these div, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a section tag. Okay, and each section tag will have an h3. Well, actually, first we should probably do that as a map because we're looping. So, so we would do Pokemon dot map, and then for each P for Pokemon, for each Pokemon, for each P, essentially. What I want to return is a section tag. And for each section tag, I want to have an H2 that has the Pokemon's name. So P dot name. Okay, and let's just see if that's rendering so far. Okay. Oh, because Pokemon is not, that's right. Um. I know why. Because it should be p dot. This should be say dot Pokemon. Because technically it's an object with an array. It's, it's an object with a array under the property of Pokemon. So I think that should fix it. Yep, there we go. Okay. So there we go. So there's all the Pokemon. Okay, and just to kind of show you what was going on is that technically, if I were to do this, let's say call this loader data. And then if I console log the loader data, and then we declare Pokemon, which is going to equal loader data dot Pokemon. That should fix everything. Like you'll see here in the console log, see the original thing we got was an object with a property called Pokemon. The array is inside the object, so I had to go get to the array. Okay, so it's always good to console log things so that way you know what your data looks like. And then actually sit there and like think about what your data looks like. It'll save you a lot of grief. Okay, so we have that, and then we want like a picture of each Pokemon. So we'll say image, um, image source equals. I think it's p dot. I think what's this it should be a URL here. So let's take a look. Yeah, image is the property. So source p dot img with an alt of p.name and then we go to uh, I want to create a link so when you the import the link component because I want to create a link to a page where you can see that individual Pokemon in more detail okay so we'll grab a link tag link to we haven't created this route yet but it's going to basically be to slash Pokemon uh, well actually technically what I want to do is use interpolation because it's going to be different for each Pokemon so I really want to use backticks Pokemon slash I think it's p.id I'm pretty sure each Pokemon has an ID so let me just take a look at the data again yeah each one has an ID Okay, close it out like, oh, because I didn't close the link tag. There we go. And actually, I don't want to close that link tag because then there's no text. So I'll do button, you know, view details, we'll say, and then slash link. Okay, and let's see here. And see, like now you have this for each individual Pokemon 
Now again, we want to make that look a little bit nicer, so I'm going to just quickly style that. Okay. Again, we gave it a class of Pokemon. Okay, so the class of Pokemon, that's going to be that main like div that holds all the individual cards. I'm going to want that to be a flex, display, flex, and then we want to make sure it wraps. So flex, wrap, wrap, and that should kind of give us a better effect than what we have. Okay. And let's see here. Oh, I wrote class, didn't I? So we're going to go back to Pokemon and write class name because it's React. And here we use class name. Okay. Oh, something didn't change right. Oh, give me an extra equals. There we go. And you see, like, now that's looking a little bit better. Now, the problem here is, like, the button is being treated as an inline element. So that's why it's showing up, like, next to the picture, which is not what I want. Okay, but we can fix that. So we'll say, hey, first we're going to say uh, Pokemon, a section tag inside of a Pokemon. What I want is, the, I want that to be a card, so I want to give it a border. We'll say three picks, solid red. We want to give them a little margin, so that way each card looks a little bit separate. So margin, three pixels. And let's see how that's looking. Okay, so you see, that's that's looking cool. Okay, I also just want to center everything. So text align, center, everything in there is right now like a inline element. So that's a little bit better, but again, that picture and that button are on the same level. So to fix the button, what we'll do is we'll target the button, and they'll say any button under the class of Pokemon is um, display. It's going to be a block element. Okay a little bit better okay we want to probably give each of these um, a more of a fixed width so we'll give each section a width of 250 pixels okay so see that we get nicer squares I want to center that that button so that's gonna have to since it's a block I need to focus on the container so we'll use the justify content property and we'll just justify center all the blocks in the no actually that won't really matter here what I really want to do is make the section a flex so that way I can center that button justify content center and I did that backwards display Okay, so that's right. You could make them all rows. I don't want that, so I want to say like flex direction. I want that in the column, so that way they still stack in the column. But which means this really, I want to align items center. And there we go. That's what I want. Okay. So now we have all the Pokemon, each with their own little card. But I'd like to make it where you click on one, and it's going to take you to a route about that specific Pokemon. Okay, so we see that each one has like a URL that's going to take me to like that route. So if I click on Venusaur, let's see what the what it, it's going to take me to. Okay, see there's no route for this yet, so that's why I'm getting this error. But it's taking me to Pokemon slash three. So I need to make a route to handle that. Okay, so I'm going to make a new component, new file called single Pokemon. Okay, and essentially here what we're going to want to do is um, let's just first sketch it out single Pokemon and again I plan on using use loader data again so we'll say const you know Pokemon equals use loader data okay and then we will return Right now a div with an H1 that should have the Pokemon the Pokemon dot name. Because this should return the individual Pokemon if we do it this all right. 
Okay, so then I have to go add the route. So we'll go add the route. Okay, except now it's Pokemon slash ID. Okay, and it's going to be running single Pokemon. Okay, which is now being imported. Okay, so that's all set, but I need a different loader. I don't want this loader precise, precisely. So I'm going to head over to the loader. I'm going to actually, it's going to start out the same. So we'll just say, okay, const export single Pokemon router, Pokemon loader. Okay, but in this case, what I want to do is I do want to grab that param. So I'm going to grab params. Okay. And essentially what I want to do is say const data equals await fetch.json. Okay. It's not going to get rid of that. Okay. And I'm going to put a console log here just in case that doesn't work out the way I think it's going to work. Okay. And then from that, what I want to do is I want to return the result of data.pokemon.find. And I want to find the Pokemon whose ID equals params.id. Okay. So that'll find the Pokemon who's that and then return that single object. Okay, so that's what that's going to do. Okay, so that should return me a single Pokemon. See, I can use the params to do that. And so I'm, that, that logic is nice and isolated. Okay, and then I go back to my router and I want to pass that as my loader for that route. Single Pokemon router. So I got to import it. Import single Pokemon router loader okay cool so now let's test this out so now if i click on let's first just refresh the whole thing okay i was complaining about the key prop we'll worry about that later if i click on venusaur okay i get an issue fetch.json is not a function okay so that's i figured that might happen um so let me head back to my loaders yeah, so what it wants me to do here is do this. Await. First, we need to await the fetch. And then after we're awaiting the fetch, then we can await the call to .json. Okay, so you see like this happens first. That resolves into the response object. And then this calls the JSON method on the response object, which gives me that the response data. Okay, so now let's try that again. Okay, so that time it worked, but what? I didn't return anything. I forget. Did I forget to return? Return data dot Pokemon. Route three, but didn't return anything from your loader function. Okay, so let's try this. Let's update that. Let's say const Pokemon equals that the result of that. Let's make sure we're getting the right Pokemon. Console.log Pokemon. Let's make sure that hey that I get the actual Pokemon and then let's return it. Okay, and see I'm getting undefined there. So probably what I want to do is do this. Oh wait. Got it. Hmm. So then let's console log data. Yeah, it's a Pokemon. So then that begs the question is what is what is params that ID? Params that ID is three. So technically it should match up with the Pokemon whose ID is three. And we see like there's an ID property. So that should match up. Oh, but I think, well, let me see that. It's returning a value, so find. So for each Pokemon, we are returning the Pokemon whose ID 
matches params that ID. So let me do this. So we're going to want to eventually return that. That's going to be our return value because we want to return the if, the Boolean. You know, does it have the right ID? But let's just make sure that we are doing what we think we are doing. So p.id params.id. Let's compare. Because these are the two things I'm comparing. So let me console log them side by side. Okay, and see, there's the issue. It's a, one's a string, okay, which I should have known because everything from params is a string. Okay, so in that case, what I need to do is basically parse int params ID. So really, what I need to do is I can get rid of this, and I'm just going to pass parse int to params ID so that way we're comparing two numbers. And there we go. So now we're getting the right Pokemon. Yay. So see, you see Venusaur right there. So now I can go back to the full list of Pokemon, click on Charmander, and see now it says Charmander. Okay, and so essentially that's how you can create your route. So you see like now you don't it, the relationship between routes doesn't have to be quite as complicated as has has been in previous versions of router. Also just the way you think through your app becomes less complicated. Because you just say, okay, hey this is the data this route needs, let me go get that in the load loader. But that's not the only thing. I also mentioned something called actions. So let's talk about that. Okay. So an action essentially is what you can do is you can write a route uh, that has a form. Okay. So let's just create another component. New file. Um, form.js. Okay. Uh, function. Well, let's not call it form because it's going to collide with something else. Let's call it... Um, We'll call it my form. And then we're going to use just a, a import form. So you basically want to use this form component from React Router DOM. That's why I don't want to call it form. And this form component is basically instead of you using um, your standard forms that are built into HTML, use this form component. And this works. This allows you to use it more like you would use a traditional form where you use the action property. And you can say, hey, you know, uh, slash submit. Okay. Now, basically, we'll just have an input here of type equals text. And we'll give the the, the thing a name of uh, you know text sure okay and then we'll have a submit button keep it simple input type equals submit okay and then let's export this, export default. Okay, and actually we'll, 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 we will actually make this slash form. Okay, actually no, we can call it submit. Keep it submit. Okay, so now we're gonna go to my routes. Okay. And first thing I have to do is first get this form, my form to render. So we'll create another route called for form. And we're just going to render the my form component. But instead of using a loader, we're not going to really use anything there right now. But we are going to want to create another route called submit. And this submit route, which we, again, we'll just put like a fallback here, just h1, submitted. But more importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to pass an action here, which is going to be a function. 
And the idea is that whenever a form, whenever we use that form component, and that route is the route that is submitted as the action, it's going to call the function that's attached to that route. Okay, so I'm going to create another file called uh, actions.js, new file. Kind of like I had all my loaders in one file, I'm going to have all my actions in one file. You could also break them up in their own files. I'm going to say export, submit action. And essentially what this action will receive is the form data. So you're going to receive like this form data object. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say console.log form data. So we can see what the form data object is. I want to console.log form data dot get and then I want to get the um, text property because we called we gave that that input a name of text and then what we want to do is do a redirect which is also from react router dom so we're going to import redirect okay and then we can redirect them to another route so we can re redirect them back to the main page okay and then I just make sure I do const or actually export function submit action okay so there we go so essentially what's gonna happen is I'll submit the form it's gonna console log the results of the, what the form submitted and then send me back to the main page that's essentially what should happen so now I got this function I can head back to my router and say hey the action for this is gonna be submit action that gets imported okay so see my actions are being imported there all nice and good and now let's try this out so let me go back to the app so now I'm going to go back, well I have to create a link for form, I'll just type it in manually here right now, form, uh, I don't see the form, let me make sure that I set that up right, form, let's take a look and that's rendering the my form component, is that imported correctly, yep, my form, action, submit, Input type text. Yeah, I'm not saying let's just restart the router, just the, the, the thing just in case. Let's see if I go to slash form. Hmm, let's see here. Is anything being rendered? If I go to components, the my form component is being rendered. So I must be using that form component wrong. So let's go over here and take a look at the doc. Form. Form. Hmm. That looks, oh, well, I guess we have to specify a method. Okay, so let's do that. It's probably maybe what's missing. Method post. So yeah, I mean, this looks correct. So you see I have the action. I have my inputs in there. Oh, this will trigger updates. It doesn't feel like navigation. Yeah, no, we did all that. But we are not seeing the form. Oh, I know why. We're not returning the JSX. My bad. There we go. And there we go. So now if I click hello, if I type in like eat brunch, let's go back to the console. We should see some console logs when I hit submit. Okay. And then we see like here we get this. So that second console log was wrong. But if I see here, I get this object. That's what I'm getting from the form. I see params, request. So essentially that's what we're getting. So it's not the form data per se. Uh, params, request. Okay, quote it. So let's just see how they write their action in here. So let's take a look for the action, project that action. Do, 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 do. Form if. Here we go. Here's a version of the action. Ah, okay, so it's, we have, this is how we get the data from the form. So that's what I, that's the step I'm missing. Okay, so let me go back and edit that. Okay, so let's go back to my actions. So this is technically what I need to do is 
get the request from out of here. And then what I need to do is say, and make this, let's make this an async function. And what I need to do is const form data equals re await request dot, let me just take a look at that example again, request dot form data. Okay. And then let's try that again. So let's go back over here. Let me go back to the form. And let's type in uh, cheese. And there we go. See, there's the form data object. And then here's the cheese. Okay, so I'm able to access the individual properties of that form. And again, then you may be like, hey, why don't I just get it as an object with a bunch of key values instead of this like weird form data object? The idea is that it's trying to use the native way that the native browser APIs are already built into how the browser works with forms. So that way, you know, it, it just leans into what the browser already does instead of creating a, kind of like its own unique way that can break as the browser changes. So that's the reason why it kind of does that same thing with like solid, uh, solid start does this too. I mean, technically everyone's borrowing this from originally from Remix. Remix is really like the, the framework that, that really started this pattern, but that's how an action works. Okay, so submitting a form becomes a lot easier um, because you can just define you can define those actions, you know that, that that so you submit a form to create something you can define an action to handle that and whatnot. So when you're loading data, you use the loaders. When you're creating, updating, uh, possibly even deleting, you can use then the actions to respond to forms uh, when you do those things. And it makes it just a lot easier to kind of think through your app because you're like, okay, well, when this component loads, I should have this data. I'm going to go make a function called a loader that handles that. Okay, when I submit this form, this should happen. Well, then I'll make a route. I'll add an action to a route. So that way when that um, thing hits, and again, when I submit that form, so if I go back to the form again, and I type in whatever, notice, like I hit that, I did that redirect, so it redirects me back to the main, well, it didn't redirect me back to the main page. Let's find an action for route 05, but then return anything from your action function. Please return a null value. Oh, I think we're supposed to return that redirect. So return the redirect. Return. And then that's going to cause it to redirect. So let's try that again. Okay. So I put that there. Hit submit. And see it redirects back to the main page. Okay. So what you can do is you can just sit there and have routes that are not actually even UI at all. They're just going to handle those asynchronous actions um, that occur when you submit forms throughout your app. And you just, it's just a lot less work. You just say, okay, well, this form is going to get submitted. Put the logic in your action. Make the proper API calls to whoever those APIs are. Um, and you're good to go. So, yeah. Um, I think this is actually, you know, the more I use it, the more I'm starting to really like this pattern. And I think it does make a lot of things a lot easier to think through. Um, especially since, like, now you generally don't need use effect most of the time, which is nice because use effect can get kind of confusing at times. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully this gives you an idea of how to use this. Again, if you're using a framework like Remix.js, this is already kind of built in. Um, and the cool thing with Remix.js is that you can actually do your API, your backend API endpoints right in there. Or if you're using Solid Start, very similar, um, but just using the Solid Framework. And I think Next.js is borrowing a lot, of, like a lot of this in this like newest version. So this is just becoming like the way you do things now. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, again, my name is Alex Merced. Have a great day and enjoy. Uh, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment. I'll see y'all later.